Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. And the question of today is, what is your favorite city? Comment down below, I'm really interested to see you guys' favorite cities. Now the first article of today is, number of ripple wheels spikes to new all-time high as XRP eyes 20 cents. XRP whales are accumulating heavily as a former CFTC commissioner affirmed this token is not a security. So a lot of people went onto Twitter in the last couple of hours to really praise XRP right now and to say that they have been accumulating more. However, the price does not show. To be completely fair, I also don't think people should be buying into XRP because of this announcement. To quickly summarize what the announcement was about, it was said by the former CFTC chairman that XRP does not fall for the Howey test and thus is not a security. And he also, in his time when he was the, at least a prominent figure over at the CFTC, he did his own fair share of help to get Bitcoin and Ethereum labeled as non-securities, which of course is all quite a bullish thing for XRP. However, in the end, I don't, I don't really think people are filling their bags right now because of all of this. However, as I've stated before, it could be that some whales have just gotten themselves a little bit more of an assurance. And thus, it could be that particular big holders now decided to get their bags even bigger. However, as I just said, I don't think any or many individual players are now buying into XRP or yeah, they're, they're thinking, yeah, now I'm going to hold it because they said this. I don't, I don't think that's really going on. But it could be that some people who were doubtful before now just got a little bit more reassurance and now have deepened their bag a little bit more. That's a little bit of what this article is about here. Uh, but in the end, again, it's 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 it's, it's kind of nonsense, really, to be completely fair with you, because I don't think it's really a fair one to go for. In this case, though, we're, we're talking about a longer period of time uh, for which this is going on. XRP wills fill their bags massively. Sentiments holder distribution chart reveals that the large investors behind XRP seem to be preparing for something big. The number of addresses with millions of dollars in XRP equally known as whales, is rising substantially. Indeed, the number of addresses with over 10 million XRP has done nothing but shoot up since the March market meltdown, and sentiment shows that currently 473 addresses are holding over $2 million of the crypto, which is the highest number ever recorded. So that's again a pretty huge number if you think about it, and uh, again that's, that's pretty damn strange to, for me to kind of grasp. So the, the brown line here is the amount of people that have 10 million or more, or at least the amount of addresses that have 10 million or more coins, and it's been really going up all the way since the March, or yeah, March madness. It's been going up a ridiculous amount. You can see here on the left, the amount of people changed from about 400 or so, 397 maybe, to about, yeah, like 80 more or so, which is a, a lot of money if you think about it. Again, it's 10 million XRP that we're talking about here, which is no joke. Phishing sites use trick letters in domain names to steal XRP. Now, this type of stuff I always want to warn you guys about as soon as possible because it's just such a douchebaggy thing to do from these scammers. By the way, if you are enjoying the Daily Crypto News, please support the channel by pressing the like button and subscribing. Like and helps out with the YouTube algorithm and sub in. Yeah, man. I mean, 63% of you guys are not subscribed. You're still watching, and I want to crack that number down to 50%. So please support us by pressing the like button and subscribe. Experts from XRplorer say that a fake XRP giveaway scam emerged all the way back in January 2020, but has still remained alive. Starting February 1st, Ripple is releasing 3 billion XRP to incentivize network users get 25% more XRP added to your account balance in just minutes is what this scam is all about. And most likely, a lot of people are falling for this phishing scam. You might be wondering, why, why, why is that so? Well, in this case here, they're using homoglyph 
domains. And what that kind of means is instead of ripple.com, they will put it ripple.com. So it's basically the same spelling to a lot of people. But again, the, the, how do you say this in English? The, the, the punk, no, the, the ex, ex, accent. Is that how you say it in English? I don't even know. I only know how you say it in Dutch. This little thing on the eye here, um, that, that changed. You guys see what I mean here. It, it changed in the name here. And to the, the easiest eye or some people that are just quickly watching. Yeah, you don't see that that's different. I can really, really get it. Uh, a lot of a lot of different characters are there as well to do this type of stuff. For example, there's different dots that you can have above numbers and, and letters. And sometimes, like, for example, on Norsk, or what is it called? And some some number or some characters from like Norway and stuff they sometimes use and some different E's and some different I's with some different things above it or some different L's where they use a, an I's and L and things like that a lot of these things which you sometimes just don't notice and it's very annoying to be completely honest with you but the total amount stolen most likely less than a million dollars uh most likely a lot more is going through these different websites like um or different scams like for example the one on youtube which i've been warning you guys about however a lot of guys are you know still scamming here and there's nothing we can do about it except for reporting it to ripple so they can do something about it but we as individuals all we can do is warn each other for them and watch out ripple signs four new cross-border clients number of companies utilizing xrp stands at 14. Ripple just added four new clients to its cross-border payment network. The San Francisco startup says all the new customers are utilizing RippleNet Cloud, a recently released cloud-based platform decided to help or designed to help banks and financial institutions plug into Ripple's network without the need to spend money on additional hardware or staff. Newer existing clients can use the cloud option to enable Ripple's payment messaging system as well as its XRP remains platform, ODL. These new RippleNet Cloud customers include BC Remit, an online money transfer service that facilitates payments between the United Kingdom and the Philippines, Spot on Money, and again, BC Remit we've known about before, but I guess they're new to the RippleNet Cloud, Spot on Money, a UK regulated remittance provider, Lulu International Exchange, an Abu Dhabi based foreign exchange company, and Orbit Remit a New Zealand-based money transfer provider. Ripple has refueled 17 cloud customers in total. And um, yeah, I'm pretty damn excited about all that's going on in, in, in Ripple space right now. It's been pretty damn big. And here's a list of the ODL customers at this point, uh, but not excluded to. Maybe there's a couple ones that they're missing, but uh, you can check that for yourself if you want to. Here was Lulu, again, UAE. Uh, I have a couple more things here for Ripple. Ripple XRP jumps after former CFTC chairman's latest declaration. Again, I just want to kind of state that that is not the case. People take this way out of context and way out of proportion by stating that XRP is going to be doing good or things like that. No, most of the time, announcements like this don't tend to increase the price, but they're really positive for a lot of us holders that are here for the longer term because we get our fundamentals right. Bitcoin dominance is about to collapse, according to crypto trader Scott Melker. Crypto trader Scott Melker believes that another altcoin season might be on the horizon. Seeding ground to altcoins and Cardano kicking off another alt season? Well, the wolf of all streets says on Twitter, and I think you guys can't see the left completely, so let me put it like this. BTC dominance. For those of you that believe in charting this thing, it's dangling on the edge of the precip precipice. If it breaks down, you know what that could mean? Something that rhymes with fault season or fault reason here. And of course, he's talking about alt season. So one of the things I've been telling you guys about for a pretty damn long time is that if Bitcoin dominance goes down, there's a lot of bigger of a chance that these coins decouple. And there's also a lot I guess it's kind of an indicator, but also a uh, kind of a, 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 a yeah, something that could lead up to it. And what I'm talking about there is whenever Bitcoin dominance goes down, there's a higher chance of alts rising. But it could also just be alts rise and Bitcoin not as much, which would mean a lower Bitcoin dominance. It could be either of the two, basically. However, again, there's no, in my opinion, real good way to sketch 
or to to to, to go and oh, what am I? I'm, I'm trying to tell you guys here. There's almost no way to really get yourself a good measure of of how this percentage is going to be changing, right? These guys are charting it. It's like the it's the it's the dominance we're talking about here, man. I don't think that works. I don't think there's resistances and stuff for dominance here. Uh, but maybe there is. Maybe I'm completely wrong. I don't believe in these charts, though. I don't believe in it at all. At 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 all at all. So yeah, if you do, again, you do you. But I don't. And um, I think you can chart Bitcoin, but still the dominance one. Yeah, I don't know. It just is too difficult. I think. Or maybe just correlates enough to Bitcoin where you can just do it anyway. But I don't believe in charting this thing specifically. Two altcoins that might have begun their bullish trends. Sia coin is facing major resistance at 44 Satoshi. A golden cross has taken place on the daily time frame. And Lisk has broken out from a, both a long and short term descending resistance line. Some cool stuff you might want to know about. Dollar will crash, 35% triggering crypto will run, former Morgan Stanley chairman predicts. So that's a pretty heavy title, pretty heavy assumption, and a pretty bold claim. Former Morgan Stanley Asia chairman Stephen Roach predicts Bitcoin dollar, or sorry, predicts dollar crash or will crash 35% in the coming years. The world reserve currency failing will mark the end of this era, which should benefit the price of Bitcoin and which will most likely also lead to a completely new era with a new world reserve currency. At least that's what I expect. I've told you guys before about uh, what I think about world reserve currencies and I talk more about that on my finance channel. And this is really kind of an article which I, I would cover in my finance channel. But it's also really crypto-y because, well, if the dollar crashes, it will most likely ignite a crypto run. It could definitely be the case. Uh, but it also depends on what the correlation is going to be to stocks. Because we know how stocks would react to um, the, the dollar price changing a lot. At least we can we can kind of expect a couple of scenarios. But what Bitcoin would do, we don't know if it's going to follow stocks exactly or really not at all. That, that's the scary part about Bitcoin. It could be that stocks do really, really bad and Bitcoin does extremely good. It could also be that stocks do really, really good and Bitcoin does good. So, yeah, it's kind of a win-win, but also kind of not because we don't know the correlation. But in the end, Bitcoin is going to do good eventually, I believe, personally believe. Deutsche Bank warns of disaster worse than pandemic that could completely screw up Bitcoin. So that's another pretty heavy, bold claim. In a new report, Deutsche Bank ominously says there is a strong likelihood of a disaster far worse than the recent pandemic coming of the next 10 years. At least one of these scenarios could put an end on Bitcoin. Is another even more devastating black swan event coming over the next decade? Well, I mean, there's always these, these things coming up, right? Is there anything really, really new that's crazy? Um, no. Severe solar flare disaster could kill Bitcoin, make current pandemic seem like the walk in the park. Yeah, and um, Deutsche Bank says that this is even more likely than another war, that there's going to be a major influenza outbreak, a global war, a global catastrophic volcanic eruption, or the worst for Bitcoin, a solar flare. Yeah, um... Yeah, what can I say about that? I know some stuff that I want to say, but I'm gonna give you guys the idea here of this is just you can you can always say this like, yeah, there could there, yeah the Earth could fade away. You know, everybody could just die. Yeah, that would be very very bad for for stocks. <laughs> wow, thank you for um uh, for this one. Thank you for the warning, guys. I'm gonna really put that one in my back pocket. Gonna 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 enjoy this one. Also, some guys have been saying that this. So Saturday is the Sunday? No, Sunday is going to be the end of the world, right? Saw some guys claim that. So, um, yeah, better prepare your ass. <laughs> no, this stuff I don't I don't personally fall for too much. If you do, again, put it in the comment section down below, but I don't. And also what you could do, by the way, is press the like button and subscribe because it helps out. 
This silver fractal suggests Bitcoin could soon see a parabolic rally. Bitcoin's well-established consolidation trend is showing no signs of ending anytime soon as the crypto is still hovering within the mid-9000 region. Each attempt to break above or below the upper and lower boundaries of its current trading range have been unsuccessful. There is, however, one fractal pattern that bodes well for the cryptos' bulls. One analyst is pointing to similarities between previous silver price action and Bitcoin for insights into where the benchmark digital asset would trend next. And it's exactly the same as I've been telling you for the last couple of weeks. If we don't get past 10,000 with a pretty big move, we're going to either hover just below it here in this $9,200, $9,600 region, maybe $9,700 that there ish. We're going to hover here. Or we're going to fall down below $8,600 and then see from there. I don't know exactly where the support, the big support is below $9,000. But we'll most likely fall. Oh, there's one at ninety or $8,900. But a couple out there, we're going to most likely fall there and yeah, stay there for a little while. I was referring to this support right here at about $8,800. No, it's a $9,600 one. There's one over there. No, 86, wait, I'm, I'm getting confused a little bit, guys. There's one over at about $8,600. It's a pretty heavy one. It's this one right here, 87. You guys get it? If we break past that one again, that would also be another oh, another crazy moment for, for all of us to speculate again. But for right now, that's too far away. Some other stuff that I told you guys I was, I was going to wait for a little bit was this. There are... These are the 2020 CNBC's Disruptor 50 companies. And here I want to show you guys a little bit of a list about what all the companies are. Stripe, Coupang, Indigo, Coursera, Klarna, Tempest. A lot of these I've seen before but not really been involved with too much. However, Stripe right now is getting so freaking popular. As you can see here, it's also number one with unlocking the lockdowns' biggest value and a lot of these have, have some some crazy some crazy crazy benefits to use, um, and a lot of them are really really popular as well. But one of them in particular, I don't know if you guys have seen it already here. One of them in particular is really really interesting. And yes, guys, I'm of course talking here about number twenty eight, Ripple. It's in the top fifty disruptor list on CNBC which is a pretty heavy distinction to get. And it's pretty damn heavy to, to, to see Ripple in that list. A majority of them, in fact, are already billion-dollar businesses. 36 disruptions this year are unicorns that have already passed the $1 billion valuation mark. Maybe more important, this year, 37 have hired new employees since the pandemic began, and 19 have pivoted their productions or launched new ones to meet the challenges of the pandemic. These are some of the most important tech and you know alike companies here with some other ones to exclude it that are just huge within this time, but also just in general here. These are huge. As you see Ripple being in that list as a an answer or a crypto answer to money transfer. I like that. I like that a lot. Again, this is all kind of referring to the same thing here. Out of over 4,000 cryptocurrencies, XRP is the only one listed as disrupting the system. That's because, again, when you're calling out Ripple, you're also calling out XRP. In this sense, especially when we're talking about um, a crypto answer to money transfer, they really are looking at ODL here. They really are talking about um, XRP here specifically because it's a crypto answer, right? Otherwise, I would have said a, a fintech answer to yada, 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 or things like that. But no, they said it really, really specifically here. Can I? Oh, I got to confirm this type of stuff. Let me quickly try to turn it off here. Don't run. There we go. Yeah, they would have they would have said fintech and, and nothing mentioned in crypto, right? That would have been really, really strange for them to do. Here you can see Ripple and, and what it is all about. Value, it's $10 billion and yada, yada, yada. Their, um, their, their ventures as well and how they got funded. A little bit on that. But I think that's enough for today. This stuff was pretty damn huge, but we all know it now. Yes, they got a pretty big distinction, pretty damn cool, pretty damn heavy, but that's also everything. The price is not going to change because of it, but it's just good again for our long-term hold, just like a couple of these things we saw earlier, like, for example, this um, this distinction that was given by the former CFTC chairman. It's all just relatively good because we, we get another confirmation that 
we're in it for the long term and our investment is solid. In terms of price, though, most of the times it doesn't budge and I don't expect it to. But guys, thank you all for watching this video. Hopefully you all enjoyed it and I'll see you guys again in another crypto video soon. Make sure you press the like button and subscribe if you enjoyed this one.